Oh, hey, excuse me, excuse me. Hey, what's going on? Hi, um, sorry to stop you. I I'm looking for a new construction house. It's supposed to have no uh, HOA and uh, a three-car garage. Have have you seen that house by chance? Well, I do know of a three-car garage, new construction home. If you want to hop in, I'll take you. Let's go take a look. Yeah, sure. Let, let's do it. Thank you so awesome. much. So my name is Renzo Montuti. Um, you're actually in luck because I'm a realtor here in Central Florida. And, you know, I specialize a lot in Ocala as well. I'm just curious, so you're coming from New York. What, what's bringing you down here to Florida? Um, well, I mean, there's there's a few things, the weather for one, but also um, I just, I want a new home, but those prices in New York are just unaffordable. Anything new is a million dollars, it feels like. I'll, I'll tell you what, you know, we get a lot of clientele that tell us the same exact thing, that it's pretty unaffordable, but, you know, the good thing about Florida is there's a lot of growing areas, a lot of metropolitan cities and you're probably in one of the fastest growing ones here in the state. While we're driving to this property, let me give you a good idea on where we are located. If you're looking to move to Ocala, you need to know where Highway 200 is, right? Highway 200 okay. is gonna be where all of your shopping is gonna be done. Your Barnes and Noble, your outdoor malls, your movie theaters, your Publix, your Walmarts. Then the World Equestrian Center is about 20 minutes away. Downtown Ocala is about 25 minutes away. Personally, as a nature lover, you're gonna have Rainbow Springs 15 minutes away. You're gonna have Shalom Park 10 minutes away. Awesome, I mean, I, I kind of flew into Orlando's airport and then just drove straight here. So I haven't really had a chance to see what else is around, but I'm, I mean, I'm assuming we gotta be pretty close to yeah. the rest of the state, right? It, it's, it's funny you say that. I'm actually from Orlando, Florida. I drive out here probably three to four times a week and it takes me about an hour and 15 minutes, right? So Orlando's gonna be the closest international airport. You also got Tampa about an hour and a half away. You got the beach, it, you got Crystal River 30, 40 minutes away. But hey, awesome. we're actually here at the property. Let's go check it out. All right, so JP, before we get inside this house, I wanna make sure you have a good understanding at what you're looking at. So right here, we got a four bed, three bathroom home. It's gonna have just under 2,500 square feet. And look at this beautiful three car garage. Also, this is gonna be on 0.34 acres of land, so just about a third of an acre. This is on flood zone X. The whole backyard is cleared, so you have a ton of land, a ton of room if you wanna build a pool. You know, just on the exterior, you can see you have the stack stone at the bottom. You got the nice black trim with the gray exterior color. In my opinion, it looks beautiful. So JP, what do you say? Let's go take a look. I'm excited to get inside. Hey, let's do it. So first thing that I notice is like, when a property has a front patio space, this is just makes it so nice because if you wake up in the morning, do you like coffee, JP? I love coffee. So in the morning, you can come out here, have a cup of coffee, get on your rocking chair, and it's you know very cool in here as well. You could probably even get like a, a fan up here if you really want like spending time outside. Let's get inside. With this house, one of my favorite things is this property actually has an area that you can use as an in-law unit. So right over here, you're gonna have a space kind of at the very front of the home. So like you walk in the door and you can come into this area, can put a barn door here, and you're gonna have your full bathroom in here with a tub. And then right over here, you're gonna have a full bedroom. You're gonna have a nice window facing the north side of the house. A lot of natural light coming in here. You got the cozy carpet and you got the closet space. So real quick, you know, let's step into this bathroom, JP, so you can take a look. Got the nice quartz, right? Everybody loves quartz these days. Shaker cabinets with the soft clothes. You got your toilet right over here, and then you got your tub. If you look at the floor, this is gonna be LVP in all of the common areas except for the bedrooms. This might be a weird question, but what is LV, LVB you said? That's a great question. So LVP is luxury vinyl plank flooring. It's a scratch resistant and water resistant flooring that is very durable. So that's it's- perfect. The kids always make a mess. Exactly. And that's what, the, that's what LVP is really meant for. It lasts longer than hardwood. You're not gonna get moisture under it. So it's very durable and lasts a long time. Perfect. Yeah. So JP, as we continue through the house, this is gonna be the living room. Can set up your TV right over here. 
you have a really massive space. So I can tell you're a creative person. So you probably get like a nice chair, nice table and really create a good experience. And now if you go this way, JP, you're gonna step into the kitchen. As you can see, you got a really nice large island, farmhouse sink, quartz countertop. You got your stove, microwave, refrigerator right over here and your dishwasher right down here. Another cool thing is that this builder, all the appliances are gonna be coming with the home and these are all upgraded appliances. So we're gonna go take a look at the washer and dryer in a second, but these are all upgraded Samsung appliances. Few more notes, you know, you got extra cabinet space, you got the nice subway backsplash. Now right over here, this is gonna be the pantry. This is gonna be the mud room. And then here we got the laundry room with your Samsung washer and dryer. Nice window, and give you some natural light coming in. Nice. Yeah. So we're gonna go all the way back across. This is gonna be the master bedroom. Now stepping into the master, it's gonna be a really, really large master. You're gonna have tray ceilings with the recessed lighting. Nice big double window facing the south side of the home. Come take a look, JP. Look at this backyard. Look at this view from where you're at. Like completely cleared. Another important thing is that behind you, that's just conservation area that Marion County has. So nobody's gonna be building back there ever. Wow. If you can actually see there's a fence that the city put up. So you're not gonna have any back neighbors and this is gonna be a huge lot. So no one knows what you're doing. Nobody is gonna be able to tell you what you can or can't do. This is your private oasis. Perfect. Now come with me. You're gonna have a nice barn door for when you step into your bathroom, walk-in shower, double sink. So let's hop in here. This is gonna be her closet space pretty much, right? Yeah, that and makes sense. Another cool feature this builder did is you got a little natural light, you got a cool skylight coming out here. So that's awesome. This is a master bath, master bedroom. Now let's go take a look at the other guest bedrooms. You know, Renzo, I like how the master bedroom is kind of tucked off into its own little space. That's the thing, like it, you have a lot of good separation. You know, you got your in-law unit, you got your master, and then here you got your other two bedrooms. Real quick, this is gonna be the dining room area. It's extended right next to the lanai. You got a view of the lanai and the backyard. These are gonna be the next two bedrooms. Let's start with this one right over here. They're both gonna be pretty similar. The one thing to note is this is gonna have a Jack and Joe bathroom as well. This one has a window facing the backyard. You got your nice walk-in closet. And then right here is the entrance into the Jack and Joe. Quartz countertop, double sink, bathtub, toilet, boom. And then this takes you right into the next bedroom. Whenever you have family come over, or you have friends come over, they need to stay in a room, you got the in-law area over there. Perfect. Another yeah. important thing, JP, is these are not gonna be the traditional like eight foot ceilings. This is gonna be 10 foot, so they're much taller. It's gonna make the house feel a lot bigger. But yeah, anyways, it does. I noticed that, but I couldn't put my finger on what exactly it was. Exactly. So what do you say? Let's go take a look at the backyard. Perfect. So again, you know, in the mornings with your coffee, JP, I mean, you, you're from Colombia. You have the best coffee in the world. I like so to you think so. <laughs> so, you got, so you got your porch in the front. You have your porch in the back. This one is a beautiful view. Like I mentioned, JP, this is 0.34 acres. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna have a really big space back here. You can fence it in. You can put a pool back here. Try what else would you do with a big piece of land like this? Uh, I'd like to have like a fire pit. I don't know, I mean, are there restrictions against me putting like a fire pit back here? And well, again, there's no HOA on this property. So uh, no one's okay, gonna tell you okay. what you can and can't do. Now there are deed restrictions. Um, and those deed restrictions are you can't have a chicken coop and you can't have a large fence covering the front exposure of your home on the front side, but you can have it as tall and wide and big as you want on the sides and the back. Oh, that's, so, that's perfect. That's yeah. Cool. Now, Renzo, as I was walking around earlier, I saw a lot of houses with like these big kind of like cylinder tubes in the back. Like I, I'm assuming it's for the water or something, but that's I don't a, see one here. That's super, that's super important. So that's gonna actually be your septic system, but you're gonna either have public sewer or you're gonna have a septic tank. And some of the biggest questions we have is like, especially you're from New York, probably don't use too many septic tanks. Not at all. So the septic tank is gonna last you, if it's just like one or two people, it'll last you about 10, eight to 10 years. 
If it's a family of three to four, every five to seven years, you just have to hire a company to come clean it out. It takes maybe a couple hours and it costs about three to $400 right now in Ocala. So here in Ocala, you're either gonna have well water or public water. I don't see a well back here and I know there's not one in the ground. So this is actually gonna be public water from the city. Perfect, okay, yeah. that sounds nice. Awesome, well JP, what do you say? Let's go inside, I'll talk to you about the pricing on this house and you know what a down payment option could look like for you that's perfect that's exactly what i need to know awesome let's do it all right jp well it's been awesome touring the property with you i hope you've enjoyed it i know you're coming from new york looking to move down to florida so let's talk over some details about you know making a move from up north and what it would look like if you wanted to buy down here first of all you know, if you have a job in New York and you want to move to Ocala and purchase this as a primary residence using less than 20% down, you're going to need a job letter or a transfer of a job here in Ocala. So that's something super important to know. If you're looking for an investment property or if you're looking for a secondary home, you know, you, you just need about 20 to 30% down payment. On the price, this property is currently listed at $400,000, okay? So $400,000 is the price, JP. And now the taxes are gonna be about 1% of the purchase price of the home. So it's gonna be about $4,000 per year. Now, since you're moving down here, you're gonna have an option. Uh, after one year of living here and becoming a resident, you're gonna be able to apply for Florida Homestead tax exemption, which is gonna deduct up to $50,000 off the taxable value of your home. And it doesn't allow your property taxes to go up more than 2% per year, which is really, really nice. So, Renzo, quick question. So, for example, I know you said that that was after living in the property for a year. Well, what's going to happen for that first year that I live here? The first year, so this house was built, finished being built in 2024. So you only pay taxes on the land, which might be three to four hundred dollars at the max. And it's prorated. So you're only going to pay from the time of closing to the end of the year. JP, let's say how much money would you be putting down if you were looking to move? Um, well, I would be looking to put, um, I don't know, whatever the conventional minimum is. So what, 5%? Okay. Um, but I've also heard something about 20% uh, being a better deal because of some type of insurance. Uh, well, what do you recommend? Yeah, so I'll kind of run the whole thing down for you. First, if you want to get in with the least amount of money, you can do the FHA 3.5% down payment. So on a property like this, you're looking at $14,000, right? 5% is gonna be $20,000. But if you decide to put 20% down, so 400,000, 20% is gonna be $80,000, you're not gonna have to pay something called private mortgage insurance. That's what it was. Exactly, so on a conventional loan, once you have 20% equity in your home, you don't have to pay any private mortgage insurance. On FHA loans, you gotta pay for the whole lifetime of the loan. So it's gonna save you thousands of dollars over the life of the loan and just two to $300 monthly, which is super, super unique. Right now in New York, insurance is killing me. Yeah. What does that look like here? So on a, prop a new construction home in Ocala, insurance rates are gonna be on a property like this, at the very maximum, it'll be about $1,500 a year. But realistically, I'd say you get a quote between twelve dollars to $1,300. You know, I love the property. I think we can make something happen. Awesome. So what I recommend to you as a realtor, putting an offer on this home is since you're financing, you know, I know this builder pretty well. I'd recommend offering asking price, but also asking for them to cover all of your closing costs. So I would ask for about 3%. That's gonna be about $12,000 in closing costs. Closing costs are gonna include your inspections, your appraisals, your surveys, your lender fees, your title fees, and prorated taxes. Inspection on new construction homes aren't necessary, but we always recommend it just because, you know, every once in a while someone can miss something, right? But it's not necessary if you don't want it. But at the end of the day, that's what I recommend we offer. What do you say we go write it up? That sounds aggressive and I like it. Let's do it. Awesome. Let me go get my computer and let's get it done. Sounds good. Thanks right. so much.